All right, we're live. George Castro again here as part of the Ubuntu Online Summit. Uh, this session is going to be benchmarking clouds with me and Adam Israel. Just to give you the quick intro here before he starts, uh, there are many cloud providers out there. Um, and performance is kind of a very complex topic, right? It's not like before we had a bare metal server and, you know, this model Intel chip with this kind of hard drive you know, does X amount of performance, right? And it was really easy to kind of like judge hardware. With clouds, it's a little harder, right? Like you're not even in control of the hypervisor, right? There's different cloud instances. Not all clouds use the same kind of instances, right? So a medium in one cloud might be different from a medium. On top of that, you've got the pricing complexity, right? So we know people that have spreadsheets that say, well, you know, this is the equivalent of this instance on this cloud. It cost me this much. And even, even in, within it, your own cloud, right, is it cheaper? faster and more effective to run a bunch of things on smaller instances or um, less things on bigger instances, right? You don't know. Um, so a, a lot of it is guesswork and we're like, you know, we could figure this out. Um, so this is something that we've been working on um, for a while now is how to figure out how we can not only just be able to benchmark clouds as well, but you have to include also uh, bare metal as well, right? You have people saying, well, you know, I can, um, you know, I can make you a cloud much cheaper, much higher performant if we build it ourselves and go with, with a infrastructure as a service company. Is that true? You don't know. You got to measure. So um, for us, it's all about making sure that you know it's not just enough to just do a one-off measure every few months to see who's doing what. Right? For us, it needed to be repeatable. It needed to be open. It needed to be uh, run on any cloud, and it needed to be programmatic and observable. Right? Like it does. If you can't see what we're measuring, then that doesn't really make a lot of choices. So Adam has been really working a lot on this, and he is ready to show you guys something great. So with that, Adam, take it away. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, my name is Adam Israel. I am a Juju Charmer. And uh, the last six months or so, I've been focusing on benchmarking. So why should you care about benchmarks? Uh, the first thing is just because good isn't enough. Uh, you can build out your application and throw hardware at it, but at the end of the day, in the cloud, uh, resources matter. Resources are what costs you money. So uh, you want to make sure that you're, you're using as much as you have and not spending too much on resources you don't need. So the evolution of benchmarking. Uh, we start with machine benchmarks. Uh, we can run benchmarks against the hardware to see is our disk I.O. enough? Is our memory fast enough? Uh, do we have a fast enough network? Are we saturating our network connection? Uh, so the first pass is, you know, you can you can benchmark the hardware as much as you can to make sure you're, you're fully using that. Uh, the second part of this is the component. Whether you're using MySQL or MongoDB or Cassandra, uh, if you have a improperly configured service, you are going to lose a lot of performance. Uh, if you don't have the right hardware for your component, it's going to be uh, a loss of performance. Now, these two together are, are good, but they don't test the big picture. And so what we really want to focus on is ben benchmarking the solution, uh, whether it's a, a simple WordPress blog with Apache, WordPress, and a MySQL database, or Reddit, which has Cassandra and RabbitMQ uh, and Postgres, uh, a Jenkins build farm. Uh, you want you don't want to have a bottleneck uh, in your CI infrastructure, uh, whether it's OpenStack or Big Data. Your solution is complex and has a lot of moving parts. Uh, those parts moving together uh, can impact each other as far as performance. So you want to be able to benchmark the entire solution to make sure that you're catching all of the bottlenecks and fixing them and then repeating the benchmark uh, to find where the bottleneck has shifted. Uh, so we want to look here. So component versus solution. This is a simple uh, web application uh, with a squid front end, uh, a memcached for caching, and then a Postgres database. Now we want to benchmark. Uh, we can attach the Postgres benchmark to Postgres, which will allow us to benchmark that portion of the service. Uh, so here we're, we're benchmarking a component. Uh, we could add another benchmark against Squid to see how fast is the front end. Um, but what's going on under the hood? 
uh, we really want to be able to collect metrics. Uh, when we're running an application, we want to see what's actually happening. Uh, we probably have some guesses about what's happening, but it's always good to have validation. Uh, so to do this, we, we take our, uh, our, our application here with our, with our benchmarking in place, and we add a collector. I uh, know this collector uh, sits on each, each component and will monitor the disk I.O., the CPU, the memory usage swap. Uh, it can also monitor things like package state. So if you've deployed this multiple times, uh, package versions may have changed. Uh, PIP uh, install libraries may have a different version. Uh, all of this can be tracked uh, so that through repeated runs of the benchmark, you know exactly what is installed, you know what is running, and you know uh, what kind of resources each component is taking. Uh, and on top of this, you can feed the Chaos Monkey. Uh, Chaos Monkey is a charm that we have built that allows you to introduce instability into an application. So it might introduce network stutter, uh, database lag, uh, you know, file I.O., uh, things that a real world application may experience, especially on hardware that you don't control, uh, so that you can see how your performance is affected. You can see which pieces of your system start to fall down. And then you can adjust and retest. So what is a benchmark in the Juju context? Uh, it is simply an action that follows a specific pattern. And actions are scripts that can be in any language that you prefer uh, that are run on demand against uh, a component. Uh, so back to the question of why benchmarking. Uh, repeatability is one of the things we've focused on the most. Uh, the important piece of this, uh, I often run across white papers that are interesting, and I'd like to recreate them to see if I can recreate the results, uh, how, that, how that test would work on my environment, uh, and if there's a way that I can improve on it. Uh, and a lot of white papers don't show you or include the, the steps necessary to reproduce. Uh, so with our benchmarking, uh, one, you can run it once, you can run it again, and it you can reproduce it every single time. Uh, validation. Uh, when you've worked with a, a solution long enough, you, you have gut feelings, you have ideas of where bottlenecks are, but gut feeling isn't enough. Uh, benchmarks allow you to validate your hunches uh, if it's right, if it's wrong, uh, it gives you more information to allow you to focus on where the needs to be. Uh, solutions are complex. Um, you know, the, the, the easy example of WordPress, you know, it, it's two components, WordPress uh, running on Apache and MySQL. But you could have some extremely complex solutions, especially if you get into things like OpenStack and Big Data. And those are a lot of moving parts that may not have been designed to work together, uh, may need a lot of tuning and tweaking uh, from the OS level, tweaking uh, system parameters to the hardware, uh, to changes in your software uh, to work with, with those solutions better. Uh, and then the, the bottom line is money. Uh, by running benchmarks, you can optimize the hardware you're using, the software you're using to make sure that you're not overspending on super large instances that are overkill for what a component might need. Uh, and also to build out a scalable solution so that you can scale efficiently uh, and, and use those resources as, as needed. Uh, the great thing about benchmarking, as George uh, highlighted, is that you can run this anywhere you're running Juju. Um, GCE, Joint, OpenStack, uh, MAS. So if you have hardware and you want to test your hardware, you can you can do that. Uh, it's it's really wherever we run, you can run benchmarks. So that's just the 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 quick. Uh, overview 
Um, what I'd like to know is, you know, if anybody has questions, you can ask them in the IRC channel. Uh, George, can you uh, give us what that channel is again? Oops, sorry, my mouse got stuck. Yeah, that's uh, hash Ubuntu dash UOS dash cloud is the track, and uh, hash Juju on Freenode is is where you can find us when you're well, we're not running this session. I'm just going to see if we have any questions. Uh, no questions so far. OK. So let me, I'll talk a little bit. Let me go back to some of the slides here. Mm -hmm. um, So here's our, here's our sort of our big picture of everything that this is doing. Um, we already have uh, several benchmarks uh, written and bundled with charms. Uh, MongoDB has perf, uh, MySQL, and there's a MySQL benchmark uh, charm that goes along with it. Uh, I know that a lot of the, the big data charms are getting benchmarks now, like Hadoop. Um, I believe Ceph has some charms available or some benchmarks available. Uh, so one of the things that we would like people to do is if you are a, uh, a subject matter or domain expert on a specific component, now say you're a database administrator and you really know how to tune Postgres or MySQL, uh, we want your, your feedback. Uh, you know, the, char the charms ship with uh, solid defaults, but defaults are just that. Um, we really want domain experts that can look at this and say, you know what, I, I know better ways or have other solutions for speeding up certain components, uh, whether it's the database, um, web servers, uh, et cetera. Uh, and we, we want you to test these things. We want you to benchmark them. You, we want you to find flaws uh, and, and then let us know. Uh, we have a blog at uh, cloud-benchmarks. Yeah, I think if you could spend a minute to to show off some of these results here, so people can understand that they could share them with everybody, which I think is really useful, especially if you're a project that's interested in, you know, how fast are we on certain clouds, right? Yeah, that's a that's a good idea. So, yeah. uh, um, so our, we have a a site at cloudtechbenchmarks.org that uh, allows you to run your benchmarks against your solution and submit the results. Are you able to, is it, is it showing up on screen for you, George? Yeah, click on, uh, wait, go back. Click on results, I think. Let me go back to you here. There you go, okay. Uh, so here you can see uh, a list of all the benchmarks that users have run. Uh, MongoDB, uh, so you see here we've got the, the cloud that it's run on, the benchmark. So this is MongoDB running the perf benchmark. The workload that was tested, so this was a node app with Siege, a collector, uh, our benchmark GUI, which uh, will show you the results on your, your environment and allow you to submit them and then MongoDB. Uh, we can see the result of that benchmark, when it was run, and its rank as compared to other runs of that benchmark. Uh, so for example, if we go down here, uh, this US East 1 MySQL benchmark OLTP, it has a rank of 1. So if I click on the result, you can see here the the solution that was exercised was MySQL and MySQL Benchmark. Uh, it was running on an i2 2x large instance uh, with tooting level fast uh, and MySQL Benchmark. So we can see here the environment, all the details about the run, uh, the event time, average time, all the information that are going to be useful to someone with domain knowledge to say, uh, wait a minute, here's a problem. Uh, or this is really good, is it too good to be true? 
Uh, and then below you have the exact command necessary to rerun that benchmark for yourself. Uh, and also here, uh, this Juju Quick Start will allow you to deploy this exact uh, solution. So we go back here. Um, you see we've got Cassandra Stress. Now if we go to Clouds, okay, so let's say we want to look at GCE. We can go to GCE, and we can see the GCE results the benchmarks that have run on GCE. Let me find a better example here. I think uh, EC2. Yeah, and also this site has instructions on how you can submit your own. As you can see, we've only really got the submissions from us like doing the work. Uh, but we're certainly encouraging anybody who wants to submit as many uh, bundle benchmarks as possible. The more complex, the better, right? Um, right. Right. I mean, the, 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 the idea behind this and the goal is that you have a solution in mind that either you're currently running and you, you want to upgrade or you, that you're planning to roll out. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to go in the cloud, there's a lot of cloud options now, whether it's your own or it's one of the, host, the hosted clouds. And you just don't know how your application is going to perform yet. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to lock into a solution and then find out that it's not the best one. So you can go and run your run your workload, run it on each cloud. Uh, and then you can go and uh, look and see which cloud is the best for the solution I'm running. Uh, we know it could be GCE, it could be EC2, uh, and here we see that uh, we've run Cassandra Stress uh, on, on different regions on EC2 and GCE, and GCE has outperformed them uh, with 111,000 operations per second, uh, where the best EC2 was 90,000, uh, and is at the, the lower end of the spectrum. So if you're running an application that depends heavily on Cassandra, that might lead you to GCE is the better solution, uh, comparative hardware, and to know where you want to place your services. Right, right. And with that, we got our first question in IRC. Kay Jackal asked, this looks great. Can we talk about benchmarking coverage? Like how many charms have benchmarks? Sure. Uh, right now, I don't have a, a, a solid list, but that's a really good thing that we should put together. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you for sure that MySQL, um, Cassandra, and MongoDB have benchmarks uh, mm -hmm. as well as Hadoop. The OpenStack ones, I believe we demoed a good part of that stack. With, I don't know if every single OpenStack charm has benchmarks, but... Yeah, I think I think that's a good idea that we should look at is... is Somewhere having a list of yeah, you know uh, what benchmarkable solutions. You know, I'm I'm gonna write that down. That should be something that we track, right? Because that's a that's a mark of quality, right? If it's a quality charm, it should have benchmarking things. So we should definitely track that. Yeah, that is. Uh, a and the the actions and benchmarks are relatively new. They came out with 1.24. 1.25 uh, was just released. Um, so this is a, you know, one of the first chances some people are getting to to look at this. Uh, so there's this is going to continue to grow as an as a part of our ecosystem, uh, something that we've begun using internally. Um, both as charm authors, uh, if I write a charm, I want to make sure that the defaults I have right. are good and solid for most use cases. Um, they're not always going to be the ones for every use case, but you want to hit, you know, the 80% mark. Mm -hmm. um, so to do that, I would be adding a benchmark. Uh, it's something that I can run during development, but then as a as a person who wants to use that, I can run that to make sure that the hardware that I'm running on is consistent with uh, other benchmarks that are out there. And if they're not, then I can look and see what is what is different. Mm -hmm. um, 
So here, this, this gives us a little bit of an idea. Uh, again, this is a Cassandra MongoDB MySQL uh, uh, siege, which works against uh, any web app. Uh, and the collector uh, is something that we'll be talking about in the coming days um, as we release some new components. Uh, but it, uh, it works under the hood with CollectD uh, to make sure that we collect as much system information as possible uh, without affecting the, uh, your application performance, uh, but collect that information to a central node so that we can see those results. And then here, uh, also on this page, uh, George mentioned the submitting uh, submitting to Cloud Benchmark. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a benchmark GUI charm that uh, you can add to your environment that will benchmarks will automatically talk to if it's available. It will record uh, the benchmark statistics, uh, allowing you to uh, view what which bench which charm which uh, benchmark run. Uh, was the most performant, and then that gives you an option to upload them uh, to cloudbenchmarks.org. Uh, that is awesome. Yeah. In addition to that, we are working on uh, periodic blog posts, uh, looking at different pieces of benchmarking. Uh, one part of it is to how do we improve our benchmarking story to mm -hmm. make sure that we are able to capture more pieces of a of your solution so that we're not missing something in a benchmark. Whenever you're running a benchmark, it's really a matter of you're, you're shifting sand. You're moving things around. The benchmark or the bottleneck is always moving. So if you can benchmark as much of it as possible at one time, uh, you can capture how Memcache is working, the database is working, uh, RabbitMQ or Cassandra, your web app, and you can see where things are bottlenecking where they shouldn't. And then as you fix one bottleneck, uh, it will invariably shift to another piece of the system. Um, and, and, you know, with, without this kind of repeatable benchmarking in place, you might fix one, one large bottleneck and think that you're, you're fine when in reality it's shifted somewhere else. And, you know, it can take weeks before you you, you find that next one. Uh, what we want to do is eliminate that. Um, run your benchmark, update your charm, upgrade it, run your benchmark again. Uh, you can see how, it's, how the performance has changed with the changes you have made. You can see where now what other component in your system is the, the slower piece of the system. Mm -hmm. Now, before we wrap up, because it looks like we don't have any more questions, um, and this is pretty straightforward. I mean, you know, um, is is there a stack or something that you're that you're planning on working next for your next? I mean, I don't want to say tell me what your next blog post is, but like, what kind of stack are you looking at next? And what kind of stack are you interested in people out there maybe doing? Like, is is there a place where you're specifically not looking where you'd want people to do tests? Or to submit benchmarks, like that's uh, a good question. Um, so far, you know, the focus has been Cassandra and MySQL. Uh, they're they're two really heavily used components, mm -hmm. and, and that's where I would focus on the larger components first, the the more common things. Uh, we haven't done Postgres yet, but that was that's one I'd love to see some work on. Right. Uh, and and as an aside, if anyone wants to do a comparison, do a look at uh, benchmarking a component. Uh, we accept pull requests against Cloud Benchmarks. So you can write a blog post and and get it up here to highlight the, the work you're doing to improve benchmarking. Mm -hmm. um, so, and so well, Yeah, and as well, if you're doing that work and you know submitting it back to the charms and everything, we'd be more than happy to help you with your cloud costs in that case. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, George, can you talk a little bit about the cloud developer program? Because I think this is a really good way lay into that. Because if you're doing benchmarking, and yep. it can cost some money, you know, especially if you're doing like the MySQL performance benchmarking I did for different uh, backing types, like IOPS versus SSD versus EBS. 
you can you can spend a, a fair bit of money spinning up large instances and running long benchmarks on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll definitely help you out there. Uh, since you're broadcasting your screen already, just uh, open a new tab. It's just uh, developer.juju.solutions. There you go. This is our charm program. Just submit your name, yeah, your email address, what you what you're working on, because you know uh, we want to see like what you're working on before we give you money. <laughs> um, and uh, within 24 hours, you get creds mailed to you. Uh, by default, you'll get 10 instances or so at once. And then just talk to us. And if you want to do something awesome, we'd be more happy to crank up the the account to give you more stuff. Uh, so with that, you don't have to sign up, you know, with your own credit card to AWS or anything like that. We'll handle that for you. So if you do want to do, like I've been really interested, you know, you mentioned Postgres. Like I haven't looked, I used Postgres so long ago, like all the new clustering stuff and whatnot, I, ha I haven't had a chance to even play with. And I would love to see someone uh, do a comprehensive uh, set of Postgres benchmarks I think would be really interesting. Um, but anything that's a charm can be can be benchmarked. So if you want to test, you know, your, all your favorite NoSQL databases to do a certain task. Um, Amazon makes public data sets available that you can consume and crunch and make do stuff. So if you want to do Hadoop style benchmarking or different flavors of Hadoop or, uh, you know, replace one one section of a Hadoop stack with another with another piece of technology to see if that really helps. You know, I mean, there's it's really permutation upon permutation of different things that you can do. So we'd be more than happy to help someone uh, who's interested in in doing these things and more importantly sharing them with the rest of the world so that we can make benchmarking just like a standard you know piece of kit that you do with your software, right? Like we're used to just having CI and tests and stuff. Um, but it'd be really great if if we've got the people understanding that benchmarking on these clouds because they're so different and complex is just as important, I think, as getting good tests into your open source project. So that's just how I feel. So with that, Adam, um, any any final words and last questions here on IRC before we wrap up for lunch? Yeah. Um, so when I when I talk about repeatability, this is the thing that I, I will I will harp on every single time is. Yeah, if I can't repeat it, uh, it is not. It, it's not authoritative. So mm -hmm. when someone says, "Hey, you know, I, I built out this this MySQL cl cluster, and it's outperforming every other database in the world," you know, with this hardware, and that's great. And I and I love to see those crunchy bits of data that that you know the graphs that show the performance increases with this and that. Mm -hmm. But if I can't repeat that. There's no way for me to validate it, and there's no way for me to take advantage of it. Right, right. If it's the world's fastest solution for that one guy, that doesn't really help me, does it? <laughs> yeah. so, so, like, you know, like back to the question of, you know, are there things that out there that we would like to see benchmarked? And the answer is yes, everything. But what we really want is the thing that you're working on, the thing that you're passionate about or frustrated by because it's running too slowly, that's the thing that we want to see you solve. Mm -hmm. so, um, you know, if you're if you're hitting your head against the wall because of Cassandra performance or MySQL, uh, you could be running some giant websites running WordPress, which is very possible, and you're bottlenecking and memcache isn't doing it for you, and you're not sure how to get the performance of the database. Benchmarking is a good place to first a you can recreate that in a test environment, mm -hmm. which is always an important thing. Is okay, I got production. And it, I know it's, it's, it's falling over, but I can't get it to fall over in uh, my test environment, which means I can't reproduce it. Well, this allows you to take that and, and, and be a step closer to uh, reproducibility so that then you can start to benchmark your fixes, your, your tweaks uh, to see how they perform. And then you can then see those, those uh, changes take effect in your production environment. Mm -hmm. All right, and with that, we'll take a break for lunch. We've got an hour and a half, and we'll see everyone on the flip side. We've still got Kubernetes and big data coming up, so stay tuned, and uh, we'll see you guys. Thanks, Adam, for the session. Yeah, thanks, guys. Bye.